We drove from Nelspray to Cape Town in a Suzuki Swift and for those who don't know I'm talking about the 1700 kilometers trip. That's roughly 19 hours of driving in a manual entry level car with no cruise control. The one thing I realized after reaching Cape Town is that the best way to achieve nothing is to take advice from internet people. Because when I first announced that we're going to be driving to Cape Town in a Swift, people said the car won't make it because it's too small and unstable. Hey, hey, Cape Town wind, wara wara. But I was unshaken because the Swift is my daily car and I know its capabilities. Some of you are wondering, the Suganje were already in Cape Town, how does that work? Well, this is the part where I rewind and take you back to where it all started. Welcome to another video. <laughs> The Swift was empty so the first thing we had to do was to fill up the tank but before we get to that, there's one important thing I must do to save some money for December because me I like saving money. Even for our accommodation in Cape Town we got a 15% discount. And what you're looking at right now is me putting the Palino on stationary cover because no one is going to be driving it while we're in Cape Town. I'll explain the naked insurance cover post feature later for now back to our trip. Next packed, playlist ready, it was time to hit the road. So we drove to the nearest petrol station to fill up our tank and we paid 776 rands 96 cents. We set everything to zero and started our journey. I considered upgrading to wider tires for better handling and adding some wind deflectors before taking the Swift to Cape Town. But after crunching the numbers, the math was not my thing. I was gonna end up spending my BMW man on snow and that's just flushing money down the drain. Cause the Swift is just the Swift. Even if you put nice rims and wider tires, you can't unswift it. Swift gets Swift and it ends there. So my car is still standard, I didn't change anything and it's fun to drive. Sometimes it's a bit scary when we are cruising at highway speed, but that's the fun of it. If your car never feels like it wants to kill you, you are driving a boring car. And by the way, we left the Sears and a Palino in our garage and took the Swift to Cape Town. Why? Because we are clowns. So if you were to take one of our cars to Cape Town, which one were you going to pick between the Swift, Sears and Palino? Let me know in the comment section. We pushed till we reached the first toll gate and we paid 112 friends. A whole 112 friends for a toll gate. Was kutus alabai kolendia. With that amount, I can get four and a half liters of petrol, but that's pumela. Boom! Second toll gate and we paid 75 rands. By the time we arrive in Cape Town, we're gonna be broke, broke. We cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked on the N4 and finally took the N12. I can tell you now for free, Cape Town is far. So no matter how excited you get, don't just wake up and decide to drive from Pomalanga to Cape Town, you'll cry tears. Cape Town is far. If you don't believe me, you'll see. Now it's time for our first break because resting is very important when you're doing a long distance trip. While you take a break, let me tell you about cover pause in less than 10 seconds. So with Naked Insurance, you can pause accident cover when you're not driving your car and save up to 50% on your premium. Our Suzuki Palena will just be parked in our garage while we're in Cape Town, so we post accident cover to save some money. After Cape Town, I'll park the Swift and put it on stationary cover, then drive the Sears as my daily car to continue saving money. And of course, there's terms and conditions. Your car must be parked in a garage, access controlled area, or security controlled paid parking, and it must not be driven at all. 
Some of you are thinking, how will the insurance people know if I cheat and drive my car? They will know the day you are involved in an accident and you will cry tears, because that's where things get tricky. Okay, Sharp, let's continue with our trip while I finish up the cover post story. Cape Town is far, guys. We're all gonna get bored if I just talk about the road till the end of the video. So back to cover post. Between June and August, I had a Swift spot as my long-term test car, so I put my Swift GL on stationary cover because I was not driving it. This other lady that I won't mention finished her petrol in the Palino, parked it in the garage and took my Swift because it had a full tank and my car wasn't supposed to be driven because it was on stationary cover. I almost lost my mind when I came back from work and my car wasn't in the garage. I even looked for it in the bathroom thinking maybe I parked it there by mistake. Using the Naked app, I quickly resumed accident cover with just a touch of a button and the car was fully covered. So if you use cover pause, make sure you always resume accident cover before you drive your car. There's a link in the description for those who wanna switch to Naked and save like me. Just get a quick online quote and see what they can offer you. Fast fast we're in Gauteng and Gauteng roads are very confusing. In 400 meters take the interchange on the left. Keep right at the fork and continue straight. But by is are adding 30 minutes on your estimated time of arrival or you will turn in Devon. So I remained focused till we reached the N1. And toll gate number 3. 24 rands gone. And we moved. I'm Chanan Tsama Joni me. Loko kuma karish la on vaka chela lan tsama kako. Foot loko tana sivia wen ga kume lan tiro me. Usho malumu wa konjala vama plek lebul ne mango zala shisel lang apata si kolab. So we cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked on the N1 till we reached toll gate number 4. 79 rand 50 gone. After the fourth toll gate, we were left with only two bars of fuel. So we drove to the nearest petrol station to refill our tank and rest a bit. With the first tank, we covered 477 kilometers and we are now refilling with 93 kilometers of range remaining. For the second tank, we paid 660 rand 75 cents. After that, we parked our car under a tree and chilled. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but Cape Town is far. Okay, Sharp, we continue driving. One thousand two hundred and nineteen kilometers to Cape Town. At this point, reality was starting to kick in, and we had to do a driver switch because I was tired of driving. So Mama Gasno, we took over and drove us to another toll gate. By the time we get to Cape Town, we'll be broke, broke. I moved the channel, my daughter. It's a sign. Signs over there. I'll return to D. Sir. Machine mini cooper. Come on, Rekang mini cooper in 2023.
After hours and hours of driving, we were still 1,000 kilometers away from Cape Town, but we were unshaken. So we moved. Then we got stuck at a stop and go due to roadworks. It really charred our time that thing, but we finally moved. The scary thing about long distance trips is trucks. And just like that, we're in Northern Cape and we switch drivers again. What driver meaning up Salabam? If you still don't believe that Cape Town is far, you'll see. That place is far. Even if you're already in Western Cape, it's still far. The plan was to at least push till Beaufort West, but it was late and fatigue was already kicking in. This is us driving in the middle of nowhere with only one bar of fuel remaining, but it's not a big deal because I know my car. And don't worry about time because this is a road trip, not a comrades marathon. The aim is to get to Cape Town, not to get there fast. So we found a decent guest house in Hanover to rest. That means on the first day we only covered 1,068 kilometers and we used two tanks of fuel. The first one costed 776 rand 97 cents and the second one was 660 rand 75 cents. The average fuel consumption was sitting at 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers and we were left with 704 kilometers to get to Cape Town. And one thing you have to know is that this um, Google map thing, sometimes you have to know where you are going. But because we prayed the Almighty God, so far so good. Head south, and then yeah. turn left. <laughs> Our guest house was pretty decent, but the surrounding area was giving poppy show vibes. Here we took a wrong turn looking for a petrol station. Okay, shop, we got to the filling station and refilled our tank and we paid 761 cents. <laughs>
So we cooked and cooked and cooked till we found a petrol station and we stopped just to rest, but petrol-wise we were still good. There's a point where the remaining distance to Cape Town was less than our remaining fuel range, so we thought we were gonna get to Cape Town without refilling Gantu. After resting, we're on the road again and we pushed. Cape Town is very far and if we included everything in this video, it was going to be two days long. I hate constantly worrying about petrol when doing a long distance trip, so we found a petrol station and topped up with 318 rand 65 cents, just to make sure we get to Cape Town without worrying about fuel. flying all you see is clouds and aerial views of mountains not you are in a geography class but with road trips you are within that's why i prefer driving we made it to western cape in a swift and people were saying hey hey swift you can't drive it to cape town but we made it yes the handling of the swift is not that impressive but it's not like we are constantly swayed side to side when we are cruising at highway speed there's moments where it shakes but all in all you'll be fine if you adhere to speed limits the problem only starts when you want to do unthinkable things like Renault quit drivers. Just when we're getting excited that we're getting closer to Cape Town, another toll gate, 47 Rand 50 gone. I've been saying it and I'm gonna say it again. Cape Town is far, but our trip was worth it. I don't regret anything. And now the question is, would I do it again? Well, in a swift, no. But with a better car, we can talk. Flight tickets for two adults from Nelspray to Cape Town and back were gonna cost around 19,000 rands. And with the swift, we only spent 2,518 rands 32 cents on petrol. And we were left with three bars when we got to Cape Town. Average fuel consumption was sitting at 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers. On toll gates, we spent 338 rands and 1.4 for the guest house in Hanover. This is the part where you post the video and add the numbers. 
I think today's video will end here. In part 2, we'll talk about what we did in Cape Town, our trip back to Nelspreit, car service after the trip and more details about cover paws. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in a Mzansi context.